Montana on the right side, possibly. Montana. Looking, looking. Throwing in the end zone. I've often thought that if I could get the word out somehow to get the stories, I should put a book together of, of the stories that these 49er fans lived through at that moment. Hopefully long after I'm gone, um, 49er fans will still enjoy that, that play and that year and the, that team that uh, started it all off. I was on my back, <laughs> and uh, when I let the ball go, I thought it, it was a touchdown anyway, and I heard the crowd roar, and then um, I remember distinctly getting over to the sideline, and, and the guy who was never out there, Chico Norton, was ne never on the sideline. Boy, he came up to me and said, boy, your buddy saved your ass that time. <laughs> I said, what are you talking about, Chico? He goes, we well, jumped out of the stadium to make a great catch because I hadn't seen it yet. And he said, and I go, ah, he can't jump. He's white, Chico, come on. I think that when he wanted fans to express their feelings, that's what he was trying to capture. He was trying to capture the same feeling that he had when he did it. And how did they feel? And were they as excited as he was? And I think that in life, he felt that he could do those type of things to really um, let people know that just like it, just like it mattered to him, that was one of the greatest moments in his life. I've had the great fortune and joy of experiencing the birth of three children travels, a wonderful career in pediatric nursing, but can I just say that the catch is such an indelible moment in my life, rivaled by no other. Through the years, we had watched the Cowboys take us apart time after time. To this day, I can't stand the sight of those Cowboys. So to witness your hands reaching for the stars and the moon, and to come down with that football in your hands, in the end zone, it doesn't get any better than that. The laughter, the tears, the cries of sheer happiness that followed the catch of all catches, never to be surpassed by any play to this day. Nothing can ever come close. It was the true pinnacle. The Super Bowls were fantastic, but the miracle of that play was the best thing that ever happened to our 49ers, and thus to the fans. Not only were you an amazing athlete, professional and dedicated in every respect, but your modest, warm, and genial demeanor carried it to the level of perfection. Dwight, you have our highest esteem and our gratitude. We love you. I was standing on the sideline like everybody, you know, all my teammates, at the furthest end from that end zone. And as the play kind of started to, you know, show, I'm, I'm like everybody else, you know, what's going to happen, where's the ball going? And when, Joe, when Joe released it, I didn't know where it was going. I kind of thought, like a lot of folks, it was going to be incomplete. And kind of out of nowhere, you know, uh, from my eyesight, right, because I'm watching Joe, and as the ball is released, I'm watching the ball, and all out of nowhere, there's Dwight. 
you know. And um, now the defensive player in me is like, okay, now we got to go hold him. You know, so I couldn't, I couldn't get immersed in the moment because I'm like, okay, we got, now we got to go hold him. Like many, I have very special memories around that championship game and the catch. I was right out of high school working as a teller at a bank. A guy came up to my window and was withdrawing a large amount of money. It was none of my business, but I asked him what he needed all the cash for. He said he had friends waiting in line up the stick to get tickets for the game on Sunday. Jokingly, I said, hey, if you score some extra tickets, you know, I'd love to buy them from you. I was shocked when he walked back into the bank the next day and sold me two tickets at face value. Turns out he was a San Jose cop. I called my father at work, which I never did. I asked him what he was doing on Sunday, and he replied, what the hell do you think I'm doing? I'm watching the ball game. I then asked him, I thought maybe you might rather take a ride up to the city with me. He paused for a moment and he said, you didn't. And I said, oh yes I did. These many years have passed and my father was diagnosed with Alzheimer's about seven years ago. The bad news is he no longer has first-hand memories of the, the game that day. The good news is we often watch the video of the catch and I tell him the story of that day and it's like he's experiencing it for the first time. It never fails to bring a smile to his face, and it's a memory I will hold on to for the rest of my life. Dave Mentick, San Jose. What happened that day meant a lot to everybody, and not just 49er fans, but fans of football, fans of the NFL, and uh, again, you're gonna go down in history and you're you're going you're going to you're going to be a part of the NFL's history forever Dearest Dwight when I was born I was the first grandchild of my generation and my family I think my grandpa wanted a boy but he got me instead You see my grandpa and grandma had four girls and no boys but from the beginning he loved me so much and I loved him right back he would give me the world if he could, a candy bar, watch whatever I wanted on TV, sure, with only one exception. I could never watch anything on Sunday because of stupid football. How dare football encroach on the total and complete spoiling of me by my beloved grandfather. I learned more about football every game. Soon I began to be able to call the penalties before they were announced. I was hooked, and man, I hated the Cowboys. The Sunday of the championship game, I had to babysit my next door neighbor's daughter. Oh, I was upset. I could not get out of it to watch with my grandpa. I was right next door, but I wanted to be cheering, yelling, probably cursing a little, <laughs> as we all did. And then magic happened. You caught it, you caught it. I threw my hands up, I was screaming. I fell to my knees in front of the TV. The kid I was babysitting looked at me like I was completely bonkers. Are you okay? I said, yes, we're going to the Super Bowl for the very first time ever. And it was wonderful once I got to see my grandpa. We celebrated for a long time after that and through the Super Bowl. My grandpa and I would cheer like crazy every Sunday together and it really shaped my life. Uh, I don't think I would have been as close to him without football. Love is what life is all about, and joy makes the moments in our life special. Thank you for the special moments and the love that you have given to me and to Niner Nation. Love you always, Dwight. Lorraine Round, San Jose. first got here there was a lot of still a lot of snow on the ground and uh, um, it was cold <laughs> it was really cold we got out of the van and he says hey we got we got to go shopping I need 
I need some boots and gloves and a bigger coat. So we did that that day. We got a pretty cute picture of him at Cabela's with a cowboy hat and a big old jacket. He looked, looked like a rancher. As he looked around and, you know, saw, you know, the beauty of this place. And then when we went inside, it was like, I mean, you see the little kids at Christmas when they come down the stairs and they see the enormity of the presence under the tree. And that's how he was when he was wheeling through the, the house. It was just, it was amazing. It was like he had been unleashed. Even though he was confined to a chair, he could go anywhere in his house that he wanted to. He could see all this beauty, which he just absolutely loved. One of the absolutely best things for him was to watch his wife Kelly ride the horses and you know all these windows. He, he would sit from his office to the living room to the, the kitchen and just follow her. She would ride out of view, he'd move to the next room and pick her back up again. And as it warmed up and you know the snow all melted, we'd come out here to the deck and, and him and I would sit and have a cocktail and watch Kelly ride. He'd sit here and he go, I, I can't believe I own a horse ranch. Because I feel like I got a pack. I'm on vacation. You no, know, dude, you own a horse ranch. This is yours. He was really excited about that day because of the letters um, that, you know, we're going to be read from his fans. You know, his fans were so important to him that that was one of the things he really embraced and really wanted to share was those, those moments with his fans. So he was excited about the day. The day came and, and that morning, it was a rough day, it was a rough morning. He was struggling a lot, having a hard time, you know, catching his breath and, and speaking. Everybody came in. Dwight was, Dwight was in bed. So, um, you know, it was it was one of those days he didn't even really have the energy to get in, get in his chair, and move around. Yeah. Yeah, he was struggling. He really was. But you know, when everybody got there and we set chairs around the bed, and you know, he propped himself up, and and uh, you know, they started talking and telling stories, and you could just see the the color change in his face, the smiles back, you know, he was laughing and, uh, you know, as the letters were being read, he was just, he was really in awe of the things, a lot of the things that were said. Some of the letters were pretty funny too, so, you know, we all had good laughs about, about a few of them discussing the cowboys in certain language. <laughs> I have always lived in Ohio, so being a football fan of the 49ers has never been a popular choice among friends. Boy, is that the truth? So I watched my very first football game. That date, that game just happened to be January 10th, 1982. The closest to a superhero flying out of the sky to save the day, Chris Logan, Hudson, Ohio. My good friend Pierce was the first to hit the floor. <laughs> then the darndest thing happened. Every single one of us, at least 30 people, jumped onto the pile. Peter Ford, San Jose. And Nan, remember, she was 79. She came out of the chair and actually jumped a few inches off the floor. Bill Dow, Auburn, California. At the time, I was a smoker. I was so excited jumping up and down when you made that astonishing catch that I burned a hole in my ski jacket and never got it fixed. It still has the catch hole in it. Pat Janakis. After the game, heading south on 101, I kept yelling out the passenger side of the window, they're going to the super effing bowl. Scott Blake from Medford, Oregon. I jumped up to high five my roommate at the University of Oregon and we both fell against the window. <laughs> It broke and I still have a scar on my knee and on my left ring finger. Matthew McCone, Modesto. You launched that dynasty with the catch and inspired an entire fan base. I know your life is more than a catch. You caught more touchdowns and made many more plays, 
but that was something special. Travis Black, Battle Creek, Michigan. My dad jumped up, went backwards, and wound up knocking himself out. Brazel Carter II, Bellevue, Washington. He seemed to grow, you know, more in strength and spirit, and uh, the day just continued on that way. And I can see, you know, his energy picking up just through, you know, hearing those, those letters being read. Dwight, in a way, you reached out to a foreigner who wasn't comfortable and gave him a solace and helped him fit in. This, in turn, made me a Niners fan from my birth. Daniel Roman, San Jose, California. We moved to Southern California in 1979 from NorCal. Back then, there were no highlights or internet. We look at the stats, but there were no pictures attached. Truth to be told, until the 80s, due to no TV coverage in SoCal, we thought Dwight Clark, who was making these catches in the stats, was a speedy little black receiver <laughs> from Clemson. True story. <laughs> Chris Daste, Simi Valley, California. Being the good sister that I am, my brother was watching, so I did too. He was jumping up and down, yelling at the TV, rooting for the Cowboys. I loved red and gold, but I didn't have a clue as to what was supposed to happen in football. However, every time my brother jumped up and down, I yelled, go 49ers. The more I yelled, the angrier he got. That started the best sibling rivalry ever. Melissa Helmos. Los Gatos, California. I was born and raised in Marin County and still live there today. But for one year in 1981, at the age of 13, my father got transferred to Dallas, Texas. The 49ers were my link back home. January 10th, 1982 comes around and I'm across the street in a big executive house full of cowboy fans. I was wearing my 49ers jersey, a drop of red and a sea of blue. When you caught that goddamn ball, 50 Cowboys fans fell to their knees, gasping in pure anguish, and I jumped nearly as high as you, screaming at the top of my lungs with my arms in the air. Bobby Grabian, Novato. It got all of us in that room that day to feel, you know, how lucky were, were we that we had a chance to be around it. And uh, um, yeah, I, I think that that's what was so cool is that there were things that people said that you went, that, that's good, <laughs> that's, that's really good. And then you had things that people said that you went, wow, it, 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 uh, it took the breath out of you, right? And we had moments where you wanted to feel like you had to cry because somebody it impacted their life more than just um, more than just being a game. I mean, if you step back and if you close your eyes and you went back to that day, and then you look at the enormity of what you've heard for the rest of your life around that day. You would realize that, wow, it was enormous. And um, to the point of it was so enormous that, you know, it, it changed the path of of the 49ers. Dear Mr. Clark, my father's been a 49ers fan since he started training at Travis Air Force Base in 1969. He loved San Francisco and its football team and planned to return one day. But the war was still going on and a gunship squadron was waiting for him in the train. By the time you and Joe and the rest of the team had come together, the war was over. But my dad wouldn't be there to see you. As a matter of fact, He'd miss your whole career with the 49ers. 
He was a POW after Saigon fell till 1986 and wouldn't make it back to San Francisco till 1990. Ten years of torture, starvation, and dead friends hurt him, still hurts him, but he fought for his life and survived. And when he moved into tiny Park Merced apartment, he still brought home the sporting green section, catching up on all catches and comebacks, and the team he'd followed as an Air Force cadet. When his son came along a few years later, he changed diapers with KNBR in the background. I grew up loving his 49ers and you because you guys were hope and happiness and a chance. You were an ideal to my dad, to a poor third world kid whose life earnings couldn't buy the shoes the Air Force issued him. To me, the catch is bittersweet because of the joy it brings my father who couldn't see it. But he wants you to know this. We can't get what we want or deserve sometimes. We can't even get what's fair, but we fight on for the people that came before us, that fought beside us. The children we love and whose lives we shape look to us for the battles we fought and how we fought them. You are as inspiring now, fighting for your life, as you were when you came down with that pass on Sprint Right Option. You remind me of my father. Brian Dew, San Francisco. came down on the field. Uh, I think Carmen Policy came down with me. He was in the, um, in the um, end zone. Um, and I, I, I was standing there and I knew the drive was going on and there wasn't much time left. And uh, I, was, I was behind a horse. You know, they had, they had all the police were there and they were all on these giant horses, and uh, they were they, they were all over that end zone area, and, and uh, I mean big horses. And uh, uh, all of a sudden, uh, you know, everybody exploded in the stadium, and the policeman exploded himself. He, everybody, you know, was screaming, and I said, "Well, what happened?" And he turned to me, he said. Uh, Dwight Clark just caught a touchdown pass from Joe, and uh, that's my, that's how I, I saw or didn't see the catch. On January 10th, 1982, my mom and dad, Don and Margie Foley, were present for the NFC Championship game at the Stick. Like the other 60,523 fans who were present, and the other hundreds of thousands who claimed they were, the catch changed our lives. On his way out of Candlestick Park and through his euphoria, my dad ran to the spot where you leapt into the air and landed and grabbed the biggest piece of turf he could find. He kept it for more than three decades, and at Christmas a few years ago, he gifted me a bag of turf. Today, for the first time, I have opened that bag of Candlestick grass and have repackaged some of that turf for you. I must say, it's an honor for us to share this memento with you. As you can tell, some of the grass and dirt have turned to dust, but you can't miss that distinct 49ers red paint. That piece of grass in the corner of the end zone became sacred ground as far as the Foley family was concerned. All I can say is thank you. Thank you for all the memories. Thank you for being so nice to me that one night we met and treated me like you treat a friend. My dad is now 82, and when I told him that I would have the chance to share this turf with you, he cried. That's how much the catch and the 49ers meant to him and my family. Matt Foley, San Rafael, California. Dwight was just in awe of, of that that you know he had a piece of candlestick turf right where he caught the catch i remember he uh everybody was talking about you know that's how neat that was and great that was and he in typical dc fashion he looked around the room and he's don't any of you guys get any ideas this is going with me to hear him say he wanted to take it with him uh 
you know, to take a part of the moment with him, to take a part of all of these stories with him, uh, to take a part of all of the fans and all of us that were part of it at the time with him. And Dwight took that bag of turf with him, clutched in his hands. It's a memory I'll never forget. That special piece of turf where he landed with that ball in his hand, he wanted that to be with him as he soared up into the stars and into heaven.